So how much power is hiding in here? Let's find out. What's with the banana and the tailpipe? Well, if you've ever seen the movie Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy, you'll know the reference. He used bananas to plug the tailpipe on a vehicle so it wouldn't run. And that works. If you plug the exhaust on an internal combustion engine, it's not going to work, at least not very well. Now we didn't go to that extreme in this test, but in this video, we compared the effective exhaust size on a Turbo LS. We ran a 3 inch, 3.5 inch, and 4 inch downpipe, which is the exhaust coming out of the turbo, on a Turbo LS. So in addition to the horsepower and torque gains, we're going to show you the back pressure before the turbo, back pressure after the turbo in the exhaust, and the change in boost. So wait, why would there be a change in boost? We've got a lot to cover and a little bit of controversy, so get those comments ready. Before we get to the test, we need to take a look at our test mode. You see, the power gains offered by a change in exhaust size are in direct proportion to the power output of the test motor. To maximize the flow rate of that big 4-inch exhaust, we wanted to make sure we made plenty of power, so we needed a healthy short block. Lucky for us, we had the perfect candidate. We had a 2006 LY6 6-liter. Now this was the same short block we used on our Big Bang test. The one that made 1,543 horsepower at 29 pounds, with the only change being ring gap. That's pretty healthy for a stock short block. And you know what? That short block is still alive because we're using it today. To improve the power output of that 6 liter, we installed a stage 3 turbo cam from Brian Tooley Racing. I mean, turbo cam, turbo test, works perfect. Topping that short block was a set of CNC ported TrickFlow 225 heads. The heads were secured with ARP studs and MLS gaskets. Now, topping that was a Dorman LS6 intake. All of this was controlled to make sure that the air fuel and timing stayed the same. We used the Holly HP management system. Now, this was a turbo test, so we needed a turbo. To supply boost to the 6 liter, we installed an LJMS BorgWarner billet wheel S480. Now, that's a mouthful. <laughs> that turbo was good for 12 or 1300 horsepower. So, run at the 900 horsepower level we ran this test at, it was just getting started. Cooling the boost from that BorgWarner turbo was an air to water intercooler from Procharger. Now, we ran ambient dyno water through the intercooler, meaning about 82 degrees. Now that we've covered our test motor, let's take a look at what all the comments are about. Now that we've taken a look at our test motor, let's take a look at that controversy. And that's the way we controlled boost. Unfortunately, we didn't have access to an electronic wastegate controller for this test, and we're forced to run a manual one. So what's wrong with a manual controller? Nothing. They work, but they work by bleeding the signal to the wastegate. They don't pre-select a desired boost level. Unfortunately, the opening of the wastegate is also controlled by back pressure. You see, back pressure in the system pushes against the valve to open that gate. If we change the back pressure, like when we change the exhaust, we change the opening of that gate. When we change the opening, we change the boost. But don't worry, we'll get to all that stuff in the results. For now, let's get to the test. Okay guys, the results are in on the exhaust test on our Turbo LS. As you can see from the Dyna results, stepping up from a 3 inch exhaust to a 3.5 and, and then to a 4 inch showed big power gains. I mean the gains at the top, the difference between the 3 inch and the 4 inch was over 60 horsepower. I mean that's some serious power. Who doesn't want an extra 60 horsepower? And it just goes to show you, when it comes to the exhaust on your Turbo LS, bigger is better. But I want you to look at something else. Look at the bottom of the curve. How many guys out there think that to improve turbo response, you need to increase back pressure? Let me know in the comments. The reality is that you don't want to increase back pressure by restricting the exhaust out of the turbo. If you look at the bottom of the curve, you'll see as we went up in exhaust size and exhaust flow, we improve response and power. So again, it just goes to show you whether it's response or peak power, when it comes to the exhaust on your Turbo LS, bigger is better. 
Now that we've taken a look at the power and torque, let's check out the back pressure. To correlate the difference between exhaust flow and power, we monitor back pressure. And we did it in two spots. This graph shows the back pressure before the turbo. As you can see, the difference between the 3.5 inch exhaust and the 4 inch exhaust, there was very little change, only about 2 tenths of a pound. Even the difference between the 3 inch exhaust and the 4 inch exhaust was only about a pound. Now, given the power output, we actually expected more. But now that we've taken a look at the back pressure before the turbo, let's take a look at the back pressure after the turbo. If we take a look at this graph, you might be thinking, wow, that's a big change. The reality is, it isn't. It's just the scale of the graph. I mean, the whole scale of the graph is only two pounds. So what looks like a significant change really isn't. Now, if you compare the three and a half inch to the four inch exhaust, you see there's almost no change, about two tenths of a pound. Even the difference between the three inch and the four inch is only about one pound of back pressure. Now, there seems to be a direct correlation between the back pressure before and after the turbo. But you know what? We expected a bigger change given the change in power. So maybe there's something else. Let's take a look at boost pressure. Okay guys, here's the graph you've been waiting for. Here's gonna be the controversy. This is gonna get the comments going. If you take a look at the graph, this is the boost curves for the three different exhaust sizes. Three inch, three and a half, and four inch. As you can see, the three and a half and four inch boost curves are almost identical but the three inch made less boost. So why is that? Remember our discussion about the manual wastegate controller and how extra exhaust back pressure pushes the gate open? Well, that's what happened. On the three inch run, it had higher back pressure because it was restrictive. That opened the gate earlier and resulted in less boost. So does less boost totally invalidate this test? Well, you guys can make comments and let me know, but think about this. Look at the difference in power between the three and a half and the four inch exhaust. The boost pressure was the same, yet there was still a significant difference in power. Now, if we look at the difference between the three inch and the four inch, we had about 62 horsepower. Some of that obviously is boost. Now the difference in boost is about eight tenths of a pound. If we look at our test motor, our NA6 liter, every pound of boost is worth about 30 horsepower. So at eight tenths of a pound, that would put it about 25, 26, somewhere in there. So if we subtract 26 from 62, we still have 36 horsepower. So somewhere between 35 and 40 horsepower is gonna be the gain going from a three inch exhaust to a four inch exhaust at this power level. Here's something else to think about. If you're only running 600 horsepower, the three inch exhaust is actually gonna show better because it's easier for that three inch exhaust to flow 600 horsepower worth of exhaust than it is to flow 900. But the reverse is also true. If you're trying to run 11, 12, or 1300 horsepower with a big single, obviously you're not gonna do it with a three inch exhaust because it can't flow that. That's why these big fender dump exhausts are so popular. Four, four and a half, even five inch. They wanna get all of that exhaust out quickly and effectively as possible. Okay guys, what's the upshot of all this? I mean, what do we learn? First of all, I learned I need to run an electronic wastegate controller when testing turbo stuff. But beyond that, we also learned that when it comes to the exhaust coming out of the turbo on your LS application, bigger is better. I'm Richard Holder. I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff because I got some cool stuff coming up, including using nitrous as the intercooler and nitrous with the intercooler. And the difference between a race tune and a pump gas tune on a turbo LS. Thanks guys.